Welcome to another episode of Elevate Your Grind. You're, uh, you're getting to see behind the scenes a little bit of how we get this set up and, and how people who are not in Hollywood try to create TV shows and radio shows and everything else like that. I am your host, Todd Rosales. Um, you've got a great show for you today. We've got an amazing guest. For those of you who are live with us on Instagram, you can see him already. Uh, for those of you who are on Facebook, like usual, this will be a little bit of a surprise to you. But, um, you know, guys, it, it's hard being somebody with somewhat of a platform today and, and not talking about what's going on. And I didn't intend to do that today um, because I don't feel like I'm the right person to have that conversation. Um, I am of the group that needs to be educated, right? And you'll hear me talk about this on the podcast a lot, at least when it comes to the cannabis plant, that the most important thing we can do is educate people. Now, I'm certainly not an expert on what's going on. I'm certainly not the most educated person, but I hope that my friends who are will take the opportunity to educate me, and I hope they'll take the opportunity to educate their friends and the people in their circle and the people in their office, because I believe that education is what's going to help us move forward from here. Um, some of this, this, this concept is foreign to people. Some people don't believe that they're being racist or anything else just because they don't understand. So talk to your friends, talk to us, educate us, and let us know how we can help you. Um, it's a little bit nerdy of me, but today I, I wore this shirt on purpose. Um, in DC Comics, for you nerds, you know that this symbol is not actually an S. In DC Comics, in real life, it's an S. But this symbol in DC Comics stands for hope, and that's something that I've always believed in. I actually made a, a video for my daughter the night she was born about this symbol and about hope and, wh and what it means to have hope. And, you know, I have hope for a better future. And I believe, and, and I had a whole speech that I wanted to give and everything else, but I believe as long as we have hope that we can be in a better place and we act on that hope that we were going to get there, right? Uh, my guest today has an incredible story. And maybe his story will serve as a little bit of a metaphor for where we are and where we can get to, right? Um, and, and maybe it won't, but I'm excited to talk to him. And I know right now it's blackout Tuesday and we're not supposed to have an escape, but you know what, for an hour today, let's talk about how hard work, dedication and everything else can, can help you achieve your goals. So now that we're kind of switching tones and I know it's really hard to go from that somber tone to, to one of excitement because my guest is absolutely amazing. He is somebody that I can be honest with you, at the beginning of this year, I probably didn't know much about him. Um, he was on our COVID-19 panel, and he really wowed me on that panel. And I did some research, and I told Rob, we've got to get him on the show. He's a friend of C-Lab. Um, he's an amazing entrepreneur, and he's got an amazing story. And on top of that, he's got a much better podcast than mine. So <laughs> with that being said, please welcome one of the co-founders of Green Roads, R.B. Barroso. Man, how do I follow that up? Uh, you know, Todd, it's uh, obviously it's definitely uh, weird times, you know, that, that we're dealing with, you know, globally. Um, I also need to be educated on, on things that are going on. Even, you know, my, my parents came from Cuba, you know, they, they struggled to get here and, and kind of build their foundation. Um, but there's a long way to go, you know, across the community. And, and again, I, I look at it as, everybody from the cannabis industry to what's going on globally it's kind of everything has to be like unified one way or the other um people can't do this on their own um i actually posted something earlier um because i was having comments with somebody on instagram and um it's all about bringing the leadership or the community leaders together you can't have just one group you know represented you need to have all the groups there so we could truly come up with a solution um on what's going on you know out there and uh our my hearts and go out to george Ford, you know floyd's family and and everything like that but i don't think what's going on right now is going to solve a lot of things until we all kind of sit down and kind of really figure out you know the direction that this country should go in um and and again it was amazing intro when it comes down to that it's similar to the business that we're in obviously not as emotional um, and as personal as it is, as a human life, you know, is, but um, our industries needed to pull together. Um, you know, we've been fighting this 
about 12 years is, you know, that we've, we've been fighting the fight, whether it was uh, 2014, you know, here in Florida, whether it was Amendment 2 in 2016. Um, I'm a true believer, believer in full plant. Um, I think that's, that's, you know, the plant could help in so many different ways. Um, and coming from my background as somebody who had an addiction to opiates, um, and that's truly how I got into the CBD side of the business. Um, I was a real estate broker for 15 years, since 93. I mean, my broker's license is 0658910. I mean, I did that since I was 23, 24 years old. So that was, that was my calling. You know, I sold homes when there were $150,000, you know, and then uh, they went to $500,000. But when the market crashed, we kind of, you know, like we kind of evolved into, hey, let's go to Colorado. There's MMJ there. There's medical. I had a couple friends there and we pulled some money over there. Um, for us, it was too early, obviously, because you didn't, you know, there was just too many things going on. There was no direction, truly. Um, but uh, that's kind of the direction that, that we got into and threw some money at it and lost a lot of money. Uh, I consider it education more than anything. I felt like I went to college, university, high school, MBA, hard, any other kind of, you know, every university possible to kind of learn where the industry was going. And uh, during that time, I had, I ran into an issue. Obviously, Florida had its, you know, pain epidemic going on. Yeah. Um, a lot of still people, do. Are, you know, they, it's definitely still, still here. And um, I think heroin's become a huge issue um, in this, in, in Florida and across the country because people can't afford those pills anymore. And, and I think uh, it's tragic. Uh, because, you know, people start on the pills and next thing you know, you got, you know, they go to that in that direction. Um, so I, I kind of saw that. Um, I've had three accidents. I've had three hip replacements. And uh, yeah, I, I actually I want to get into your story a little bit because I, I think it's amazing, right? Because everybody loves a success story. But in, in yours is almost a comeback story. Like you said, you know, you, you got injured, I think at age 23 playing football. And that's what led to your addiction. You weren't a drug user. You weren't doing anything else like that. You, you were prescribed pain pills for your hip. And that's what got you addicted. You know, just regular, a doctor making sure that you could walk day to day, right? It, 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 was, it was tough. I mean, I didn't have a full hip replacement in 93. I was only 23 years old. The doctors didn't want to give me a full hip replacement. So they had me pretty much drugged up with those Demerol or Percocets or anything outside of that and 96 i get a full hip replacement uh, but the pain continued um but i was building a business i i'd never been really had an addiction issue to anything else i don't drink a lot i don't you know yeah you go out and party you have friends you go to clubs but it was really never something that took me in that direction um until it was kind of just placed in front of me um after the real estate business went i mean you had you know these pain managements all over the place yeah. Um, and then next thing you know, you know, one leads to two, two leads to three. Um, and now you're filling prescriptions and you're literally addicted to, to these opiates, which, um, I feel for anybody that, that, that's going through that, because honestly, it's, it was the hardest thing that, that I had ever gone through in my life. Um, you know, almost lost my family, lost my house, lost everything, literally started from zero, went to jail, the whole nine yards and, uh, you know, came out a stronger person. But I was blessed to have a good foundation, which a lot of people don't have the blessings to have. You know, I had a good family at home. I had a good wife that, you know, that was stood behind me. I had a, two beautiful daughters. So I had something to kind of push forward on, which a lot of people don't have. Um, and this addiction doesn't look at anybody. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's, you can have a toothache and you get these pills and next thing you know, yeah. you're addicted to them. And, uh, and a lot of people have that issue and there's a lot of stories like mine um, that are out there due to these, you know, type of opiates and, and drugs that they're providing. So I always look at full plant. I think cannabis um, is an exit drug. I truly believe that. I think it, it helps with the anxiety of the separation of you not having these type of pills on you um, because you're literally a slave to the pills. I mean, there's no way around it. And uh, um, I think cannabis, CBD and other things that are more natural um, give you an exit. Um, you're going to want to have to get clean. There's no way around it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to want to fight this, this, this disease, but, but cannabis and CBD definitely give you that alternative 
to be able to take that anxiety and that stress away um, of having to have that. And, and that's kind of what guided me when I left the cannabis business in 2012 and I partnered up with my pharmacist. Uh, my pharmacist was the one that was filling my prescriptions. Dude, dude uh, I think that's, that's such a cool part to your story is, is you know, and, and I can't wait till your book comes out because I know you're going to end up writing <laughs> one eventually, man. Your story is great. Is your your current business partner was was a compounding pharmacist who you would go to and you guys essentially solved a problem together and said, we've got to share this with the world. Now, I'm sure it was a lot more complicated than that. But and, and I know I keep stopping you, man, but there's just I, I think you've told this story so much time, so many times you don't realize how amazing it is. So, I, you know, I just I want to keep I digging can't wrap in my head it. around it. I can be honest with you because I mean, I lived it and I've seen other people live it. Um, and, uh, she's an amazing woman. Um, uh, my, my partner, our CEO, Laura Baldwin Fuentes to believe and see something, um, that she was tired of. I mean, she had family members, she had friends. I think if you could, I mean, I, I've been in speaking engagements where I, one of my questions always is, is how many people here have been affected by somebody who knows that that's on opiates and literally more than half the room always raises their hand. They know somebody, a family, a friend, an aunt, an uncle, you know, somebody they went to school with that's been affected by this. So, so that's really, you know, it was, it was so important for her to kind of see that and, and want to help and get out of the business of being behind a counter where she really, all she could do is really prescribe what the doctor gave for her to fill. And uh, when she saw me and we had known each other for a long time, um, she gave me that opportunity. I said, listen, I think there's something here. We need to kind of figure this out. And that was in 2012. And uh, ever since then, you know, we incorporated the business and we just kind of started moving forward. Um, and uh, she truly believed in what I believed in, which made it a really easy to be able to kind of convert that. But we were also still dealing with, you know, being in the gray area or people saying it's snake oil or people don't not believing in it. Um, but we had family and friends that truly did, and we saw it with our own eyes. So it was kind of cool to kind of watch all that evolve uh, in, in front of us. And uh, that's what's brought us here today. I mean, we're huge advocates for it. Um, when I was on Cannabis Life Radio on 850 WFTL for a couple of years, it was, that was like our staple is like, we need to get people off these drugs. Not that they shouldn't be prescribed. There's certain people you know, that are in dire needs and serious pain that need to go and get these type of prescriptions. But the loose hand of the doctors to be able to prescribe it for a stub toe. Um, and next thing you know, you have no control over it because you can't just throw them away. Um, it's really easy to get addicted to them. Um, and, yeah. and that's kind of what we saw. And we felt um, not being able to get a license in marijuana or cannabis in Florida. Um, not really wanting to be in that side of the business, to be honest with you, because I'd seen it in Colorado. Um, and I felt with CBD, we could touch everybody, you know, and, 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 and cannabis, you're not going to have the same response as people. Not everybody's going to medicate, all, you know, not, you know, 50% of the population. I don't ever see that happening. Um, but I think 50% or more always could take CBD as a nutrient. So it's, it's almost uh, filling a gap in there. Uh, for people to to feel better yeah it's cbd to me is so much more of a, of a wellness component right and i think you hit the nail on the head when you said that you know not necessarily don't prescribe these medications but i, I listen to a lot of podcasts and I, I promote joe rogan's show more than i should not that he needs my help with the, with the deal he just signed <laughs> but um you know, he had Kevin Hart on it, and both of those guys are extremely motivational. And they said, and, and I think Ricky Williams actually said it to me first, look at all these name drops I'm doing. Um, Dropping. <laughs> you know, we, we need to combine the outlooks of both Western and Eastern medicine, right? Where Eastern medicine is very preventative, very herb driven, very much what you put into your body to kind of prevent the injuries. And then there's a, West, a piece of Western medicine that helps us fix things, right? Um, you know, there is there is reason for painkillers after a surgery, but there should be a limited amount of time to where we can wean you off of it and get you on something that's a lot lighter. Right. Um, like yeah. you said, and I remember reading your story, like they became almost a safety blanket to you, right? Just knowing yeah. that you had them on you where it was really helpful and, and that CBD help you separate yourself 
from your safety blanket. So I'm really excited that you're here today because I will be honest, I don't know a ton about the CBD side of the injury, uh, sorry, in injury, in industry, right? And I've got a bunch of questions that I'd love to talk to you about because I look at your website and you have your CBD university and I think it's amazing how you're educating so many people on this amazing product that is maybe it's a foot in the water for cannabis. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's your way to use the plant if you don't want to use it for recreational purposes as well too. So, you know, let, let's go back. What first gave you that idea? Because you came into the CBD industry when it wasn't what it is today. It's not that I'm a digital marketer, so I'm going to leverage CBD. I'm going to white label it from someone and I'm going to create a big company because I'm really good at getting ads in front of people, right? You guys were one of the people who have the scars on your back to create this trend for these digital marketers, right? So what was it like really, you know, when you launched Green Roads, I, I, I know I, I read and I love this, man, you have all the elements of a great story. You know, you guys started in one of your co-founders garage, right? So, yeah. you know, tell me what it was like back then when you guys kind of realized, Hey, this CBD thing is really helping me and we need to get this to other people. I mean, I even saw that you guys started with a topical over most other people who use tinctures because you were afraid that people weren't going to want to ingest it for fear of getting high. I, I, we were, we were terrified. I mean, you didn't have uh, laboratories, you know, that's always been a, a key component to everything that we do in our industry. I mean, whether it's legislative, whether it's passing, full panel testing, QR codes, solvents, pes pesticides. As a pharmacist, as my partner being a pharmacist, we didn't want to cause any harm to anyone. So we didn't have that. I mean, we were doing SD labs out in California. You know, not to say anything bad about that, but you, there was cross-contamination. You didn't know what you were getting. You know, there's a million different things that could go wrong. So on the topical side, we felt really, we felt more comfortable, you know, until we were able to really start testing and, and kind of really dialing down where it's at not including it was forty thousand dollars a kilo back then so not many people were going to get into the business paying yeah. forty thousand dollars a kilo uh, of isolate for a thousand grams so uh, you know that's every every spec was was important to everything that we did so we had to be we had to go very slow but there was an educational gap i mean uh, my partners and my friends out of Colorado all pretty much laughed at us. You know, they're like, you're crazy. What are you doing? Um, who's going to take that? Nobody's going to get high. They're not going to want it. It's snake oil. And we saw the benefits, including with myself and knowing how it helped me get away from my anxiety of not having to take my meds. Not including, obviously, getting in trouble, you know, ha getting clean in jail for five weeks. You know, that obviously helped. But wanting to get you know, clean before that period of time and then coming back, coming out and never looking back. So that was really what, what stood in front of me, my, you know, my family, my partner that I swore to, um, that I would never, you know, you know, ever go back to that because she gave me the opportunity. I felt she was going to walk away. Um, obviously a pharmacist license never, you know, was involved around any of this 20 plus years in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, and, uh, when they gave us that opportunity, it was, it was, it was all go. It was getting in front of everybody. Um, I was going door to door, you know, I still have green street smoke shop. That's out of, uh, Palmetto Bay that I used to drop off, you know, a couple hundred dollars worth of bottles and say, keep them, you know, and hit me back when somebody buys them. So it was kind of from the ground up, you know, us going door to door, her working 80, 90 hours a week, getting those things done. And then just getting in front of everybody trying to get in front of anybody that would listen, um, anybody that would take the product, um, and, uh, and then just continue to kind of build off that momentum um, and, and move forward, really. I mean, it was, it, was, uh, it was challenging, but it was a lot of fun. Um, we really wanted to go in a different direction. I mean, the way the company was first set up was really for pharma. You know, it was really just try to make, you know, compound Charlotte's Web had just passed. We figured maybe we could get something done. Um, get people off of opiates, you know, that are going to these clinics and kind of offer them an alternative. Um, but Florida and the feds and scheduled one narcotic and everything like that kind of really killed um, that opportunity because you had to file um, with the DEA a schedule. So you had to let them know that you were working with a scheduled one narcotic. 
And I mean, come on, it's considered same as heroin and everything else. Yeah. Um, and it was CBD for God's sake. So that there was just so many things in front of us that we felt, um, but we felt we were doing something good and we were willing to pay the price to continue to build the business forward and going on a topical side and kind of trusting that until we really um, felt comfortable with the kind of lab testing that we were doing where we weren't harming anybody with solvents or pesticides or anything like that and THC levels, which were extremely important because we didn't want to bring anything in that had, you know, higher than that 0.3 federally at that point. Dude, uh, it, it's incredible because back when you were doing, like you said, you had to register with the DEA and everything else, but from a business standpoint, I don't think people realize that even though that you were CBD, you still have all the same problems that the marijuana companies cur currently have. You know, I'm sure you went through your fair share of bank accounts and payment processors <laughs> and oh, advertisers yeah. and all that stuff. I mean, I'm sure, you know, you probably laugh about it today. Like, Hey, you know, we've got a we probably, I bet you have a good relationship with your bank and your process and everything, but I'm sure it was a long, hard road to get there. No, we went through five banks, maybe even six. Um, no merchant wanted to touch us, you know, marketing online was, was an issue. Um, we had our money held up at one point in time for, you know, over a hundred days. And that was our working capital. We've been self-funded from the beginning. Um, we didn't go out and raise, you know, $40 million or, you know, $35 million like Montel Williams did. And we didn't have that, that, that opportunity and, and God bless them. I mean, you had the connections to do that. But nobody was going to listen to somebody who had just gotten uh, sober. Um, a pharmacist had been in business for 20 years. Um, nobody was going to go out and just give us money to, you know, to create a product that nobody truly still felt had any use to it. Um, and as you said even earlier, you know, there's people that are going to medicate. I mean, we've probably sent over 5,000 patients in the state of Florida to go get their red card. You know, if, if the product doesn't work for them and it's not something that, you know, they got more pain or they have certain things, you know, whether it's Michelle Wiener or other doctors that we know, you know, we call them. say, listen, these are good doctors, you know, go and go and sign up, go get your card and, and then go get your, you know, your cannabis. You know, we're again, full flower is great. Some people need it. Some people have said, you know what? I don't need to get my card. This has been good enough. I sleep better. I don't have the anxiety you know, and things like that. And we can't even make claims. So they tell us what it's done for them. So there's always going to be two side, two buckets. Um, you know, you're, you're going to have both sides of it. We choose to stay on the CBD side. Um, and, uh, and can't, but cannabis definitely has, you know, um, again, full plan is huge. I mean, we, we definitely believe, and I think Florida sooner or later, hopefully in the next three to four years, you know, people will be able to grow their own, you know, their, their own flower you know, create their own type of products, you know, not have to worry about, you know, going to the dispensary and they could actually do something, you know, in their house. You know, I think that's the future of this industry. I truly do. I think I, and I hope that's, that's a place there we can get to, you know, w within your industry and the CBD industry, if we look at it, right, you see all the technology and the innovations because there is so much competition and there's a free market right now in the cannabis industry as a whole, there is some of that. And there's a lot of them across the country, but in our state, there's 22 and how much R and D, how much, you know, innovation are we going to see when right now everybody's just competing to put the best flower out there, right? You know, we start to see, see companies like, like truly really has a ton of different products um, that they're coming out with and, and move and, and alt med and, and rise. They're all coming out with more stuff, but they're not as incentive to start to innovate because right now it's still the race for who has the best flower. Whereas I look at your website, right? And We've got oils, topicals, edibles, capsules, soft gels. You've got CBD for pets, infused coffee and tea, um, and, and other products, which I can only imagine I can't click on right now. I see roll-ons and everything else. I mean, you don't see a ton of that all over the cannabis industry right now. And if you do see it, there's not the education that you guys have on your website. I appreciate that. I mean, I mean we, we've worked hard. I mean, for every product we launch, um, just testing it on its own and going through a third party accredited lab and going through the labeling requirements that we're going through. I mean, you said earlier, we have the same issues as THC. Every state has different regulations on CBD. So it's the same, almost the same platform as THC. 
Um, we just got approved by alcohol and tobacco in, in Louisiana. It was a nightmare to go there because our products got approved, but we had to go and get in front of the alcohol and tobacco. So they have a different regulations. You know, Florida has the SB 1020. You have to have labeling requirements. And if, you, if your labels don't fit those requirements, they pull your products off the shelf. And it, you got to get a permit, $650, um, which at the time um, we didn't, we understood the importance of it cons being considered a food. But we, you know, with COVID, a lot of these stores um, that had applied for their permit and got their permit were now essential items. Um, so they're, they were able to actually stay open. So between, that's, you know, having that SB 1020, having accredited labs now test products and not have products just out there with lead and, you know, things that could actually cause an issue um, is huge. Uh, Texas has followed that, that law with the HB 1325. Uh, Louisiana, if you read their bill before this whole COVID, um, they have a bill called HB 700. Um, you have Act 52 in Indiana. All these things are going to start selling, uh, you know, getting a guideline, hopefully for the FDA to pay attention. Um, and we were at the FDA, we were at Kelly Dyer in February. Um, we were in front of the pharmaceutical board in South Carolina in February. Um, and we were in Louisiana in February. So when we went to Kelly Dyer in Washington, um, the Capitol Journal uh, kind of quoted us because we had the FDA, we had Canopy, we had you know a bunch of people in the industry. Um, and we were basically saying, listen, Florida, our ad commissioner, Nikki Fried's done an amazing job. Our representatives have done an amazing job in this industry and at least on our CBD and hemp side of the business. Um, think yeah. about it, 2018 was just around the corner and we've come so far from that time to now hopefully in the near future, kind of force these people uh, because your grandmother's gonna take it, your daughter might take it, you know? And you know, when you got lead in a product, or you got solvents in a product, you're causing an issue for these consumers, which then the FDA might overreact and they might end up killing the industry. So we always gotta be careful about making sure that if, if we're gonna hopefully lead uh, or be one of the companies that lead, because there are good companies out there that are trying to do the same thing, we need to make sure that we kind of eliminate the, the people that are not doing the right thing. So that's where the legislation and the lobbying and the spending, we spend a lot of money doing that. Um, you know, whether it's research, $1.3 million at the University of Florida, that came out of our pocket. There's no benefits from that whatsoever. Uh, so it's not like we're benefiting and we're partnering up with the University of Florida and not wanting to sell it like Gatorade. It was more of research to kind of bring that ag community here to the state with so many issues that we're having in farming. Um, uh, does it open a the door people for people at UF us? can need all the help they can get. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I, listen, I'm here, man. So, you know, but, <laughs> but, but they didn't have, you know, you had two schools, you had FAMU, um, which they're doing a pretty good job, Dean Robinson yeah. and Ms. Pittman and, and that whole clique. Um, but we had to work with ag schools and the university of Florida was, was the school that picked us and, um, but again, there's just so, there's so much more to go and do in the state of Florida. And I really think with, you know, our commissioner Freed and Holly Bell and everything that we're doing, we were preaching to the FDA and the consumer task force, um, in, at Kelly Dyers in DC talking about follow Florida guidelines, look at the other states that are getting on board and let's be able to create a path of to success for small businesses, for farmers, um, to really excel in this industry and do things right, you know, and I think we got a great opportunity to do that. I, I, I love the dedication you guys have to putting a, a proper clean product out there and how hard you guys work to do that for, for so many levels and not just the fact that you are putting a good, healthy, clean product out there because people are putting it in their bodies, but I believe that CBD for most of the country is going to be their first foray into the cannabis industry and first impressions couldn't be more important. So there is unfortunately a lot of snake oil out there. There's CBD in gas stations and there's CBDs in corner convenience stores that are not the best, right? I know that you guys have put QR codes on your bottles that link back that will let you know what's in it, right? And I think I'm guessing it links back to the COA or you guys have a different page, but to me, I think it's so important for the advancement of this industry for companies like yourself to put this level of dedication in there because it is our first impression, right? And like you said, this may not help you and maybe cannabis is the next step, 
but at least you had a good experience and at least you weren't harmed. You're putting something that should be in your body into your body, something that does have beneficial, um, beneficial, it's beneficial. I, I don't know where I was going with that, but it does help you out and it does help with inflammation and, and all these other things. And I know you can't probably say that because there are restrictions, but I can. <laughs> Just I a little have a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, I, I love that you guys are p dedicating this much to it. And, and I think the team at Green Roads is incredible. And I don't, I think what people Thank don't you. understand about the cannabis industry is it's hard enough to be an entrepreneur as it is, right? You've got to come up with an idea. You've got to execute on it. You've got to build it and it's got to be scalable and repeatable. Now, what you guys have built is most likely scalable and repeatable, except for the fact that the process of opening your doors in other states is not repeatable because it's not the same. So there are so many extra barriers that you've had to go to, to go from being somebody who was addicted at the beginning of this decade to being, you know, on top of a $50 million a year company and maybe even bigger. I'm reading reports from 2018, um, you know, at the end of the decade, right? So it, it's incredible that the perseverance that you have all had at a time when nobody knew how to navigate these waters. And now we fast forward and you're in 10,000 locations right it's absolutely incredible and and you know i can only imagine the the stories that the four of you tell when you're sitting around you know late day at the office like can you imagine you remember when we were in danny's garage doing this stuff and, <laughs> yeah you know I, i'm jealous i, I want to be in that group <laughs> i can tell you right now it's it's been a complete team effort we've put an amazing executive team together um we 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 knew we got to a point where we really needed to bring um you know kind of more of that corporate style um and again we we you know the struggles continued i mean we just we lost banking last july um and then you had 3500 companies in the industry um then you have you know the covid that took place um then you're 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 trying to excel in, in the business with you know lab sheets and you're competing with people that are selling a thousand milligrams for 15 bucks so it's you know the challenges are still here um i think i think a lot's going to be able to tell towards the end of the year of where this is all going to go but i could tell you that the stories and the hurdles and the success um that we've been able to have as a team has been amazing i mean there's there's been i think there's never been a moment where we've thrown our hands up and said you know what we're done you know, it's always been, let's figure this out. Let, let's, you know, we could get through this. Um, one of the truly things that I miss is, is being on podcasts like yours and really, you know, getting, getting in the nitty gritty, getting back on, on Cannabis Life Radio, um, which we did for, for many years, um, and, and really start dedicating back to that time and giving back and educating more because that was one of our biggest hashtags was education was key. You know, we'd yeah. go to, you know, Cannabis Lab, we'd see Robert, we'd, we'd go to, to Tallahassee, we'd go to Jacksonville in a bus and go and speak there, even if it was 10 minutes to get in front of people. Um, I think that's going to start coming back again, because I really, I truly believe there's going to be a lot of people that are going to realize the, the, the entry point to this industry is not the same it was a year ago. Um, I, I really believe that the, it's going to be harder. Um, we, we are supporting uh, smaller uh, entrepreneurs that are trying to get into the space. We want to be able to give them a CN CGMP certificate because we own that facility, cosmetic, food. Um, we want to consult them on how to do labeling because every state might have a different label. Um, and we want to make sure that they're not breaking any rules um, or getting lawsuits. I mean, we won a lawsuit um, probably about three months ago and every company uh, from CV Science to Charlotte's Web to all these other guys are using um, the precedent that we set um, and that we fought for. Uh, and believe me, my attorneys were fighting me the you know tooth and nail, say settle, give these people you know you know a couple thousand dollars and they'll go away. And I'm like no, because if we do that for one person, then everybody else is going to line up and they're going to want a paycheck. I said so. I let, let's pay the piper now. Let's get this out of the way. Um, and then now we set precedent. Um, so there's had like four or five cases. We were just mentioned on the CV science case about a week ago. They, uh, and they used the company from Florida, Green Road to Florida, um, how the federal judge had to literally put everything on hold until the FDA comes out with their ruling, which is really what my next um, step and task is, 
is uh, making sure that Florida continues on the path that it's going, um, that our ad commissioner, Nikki Freed, which has been amazing to the industry, uh, and Holly Bell continue to go in the direction of making Florida the key state, the number one state, the people that's gonna set the bar for every other state in the country. Um, and then what, have the FDA pay attention to that. So then we could truly regulate the industry um, and make sure that competition's competition, which we love competition, um, we thrive off of it. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what we're looking to get to. And, and I think once we get there, the industry is truly gonna pan out. And I think uh, you're gonna see a lot of success stories. You're gonna see a lot of innovation in the industry. You're gonna see a lot of different types of CBD. Um, now you have universities truly studying, you know, the different types of cannabinoids, um, the effects of these different types of cannabinoids. And I think once the FDA, they don't need the name of a food or a supplement. They need to protect the consumer. You know, once they protect the consumer, we have a starting point in the industry, making sure that everything that's in the bottle is what's supposed to be in the bottle, THC level wise, or, you know, pesticides, no synthetics, none of that. Get that out of the way, set that guideline, then in the future, call it a food or a dosing amount or kind of figure that out. But like in anything in the world, you always got to have a starting point. And I think if the FDA really puts their foot down on that, and really uh, sets that standard, I think you're really gonna truly see this industry truly evolve. Cause now everybody will have a floor plan of how to work in this industry. Well, well, I hope that is the future for you because as much as I like Arby the entrepreneur, I, I really enjoy Arby the, the advocate as well. And, you know, I'll fully admit Cannabis Life Radio was on before I got into this industry, but I watched a few old episodes, man. And you know, people think with, with this podcast, like I don't, I don't want competition and other, the more cannabis podcasts, the better. I mean, the rising tide. Hunter, man, when we could cross, we could talk about different things, you know, I, I mean, exactly. I, I, and it was, it was, it's so cool to kind of have that conversation of where you've come from and what you're doing and then how excited you are to be in this space and giving us the opportunity to be able to talk about these things. I mean, there's nothing cooler than that, you know, and I think the more that we could start talking about where this industry is going and, and, and really listen, like, listen, Ricky William was ahead of his time. You know, that's yeah. just a fact, you know, he was banned from NFL, but you know what? Everybody goes back to him, you know, and I talked to a lot of NFL players that use our products and, uh, and they used to tell me, so yeah, Ricky William was kind of frowned upon. I'm like, well, you know what? He was way ahead of his time, you know, and, uh, and he understood what these type of pills and, and to it all and all these things that they used to shoot these players up with you know, how serious they are. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm glad the professional industry and, you know, hopefully NHL and now MB, you know, Major League Baseball and hopefully now with, with the NFL Association and all these guys, they allow these guys to medicate um, and not have to take a bottle of pills home um, after a game of football. Yeah, man, I, I candidly, and, and we can talk about this off air, but I, I would love to link you up with Ricky Williams because I think there's some amazing things that you guys can do together. Um, I've been lucky enough to actually get to know him and he's an amazing person and i think Absolutely. you know the two of you guys together can make some really good progress so we'll talk about that off air for sure man but it, it's been great to, to have you and, and watch you and learn from you and i really hope you know if you're considering launching another podcast if you're considering bringing cannabis life radio back that you absolutely do. Because I read the description for it and the first line was that you created it to help fight the stigma of this industry. And that's honestly, that's half the reason why I did this show, right? The other half was because I didn't know how to stay in the cannabis industry and I, I tried to think about what I was good at and I was really good about talking about the things and the products and the people that I like. So apparently if you do that on camera and put it on the internet, people enjoy it and it turns into a job. So uh, that would be the other half. But no, I, I try to, I try to put the spotlight on folks like yourself. And so this, this isn't an industry of sandals and cargo shorts and, and ponytails, although we have that, but this is an industry of, of hardworking people that are trying to bring um, a plant that has been you know, in prohibition for a very long time. And if we want to bring it back full circle to what's going on right now, a plant that's been used to, you know, used against minorities, right? And, yeah. and a lot of people don't realize that that was the initial reason for the cannabis prohibition was nothing against the plant itself, um, but because it was used primarily by minorities and it was a reason to persecute them, right? 
Um, I think we've come full circle here and I, I hope that some of the work that we're doing resonates outside of our industry. But, you know, I say we, and I'm a small part of it, but folks like yourself, man, um, you know, you keep fighting the good fight and, and, and fighting for reform and, you know, we're starting to see it and you've done so much in, in the decade that you've been in this industry, man. I, I can't thank you enough. No, I, I truly appreciate that, man. It, again, I've, I've surrounded myself and been blessed to be around some amazing people uh, like, you know, Roz McCarthy, that's been, you know, that's been a leader out there in Tallahassee. You know, I did a lot of work at one point in time with Cheryl Murray Powell that's, that's done and, and is a huge advocate and uh, been to Jamaica a lot of times. And, and I think uh, definitely this, this industry um, should open up to everybody and anything. I think they should, they, people should have benefits um, and they should have scorecards, which I know a lot of these states um, do to be able to provide for the minorities that, that have been uh, persecuted over, over this plan. I mean, it, it, it's truly shameful, uh, to be honest with you, but uh, I, th I think the next 10 years is gonna, be an is gonna be awesome. I know that the first 12 years I've been in this industry, I've watched this industry grow so drastically, and I think it's gonna continue to grow. Um, and I think, again, it, it's about who's sitting at the table. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, you know, I, I'm in the middle, you know, I, I, I go to Tallahassee, I can deal with Democratic side, I can deal with the Republican side. Uh, the fact is, is that you can't, you got to have both of them sitting at the table. Um, yeah. and, and I've had some discussions where, you know, I've had liberal friends or Democrat, well, why are you talking to them? I said, because they're the ones who need to be educated. And if they're educated and they're able to come together, we could actually get something done. You can't just be one-sided because if you do, then the other side's just not going to listen. You're not going to be able to get anything done. So I've been blessed to be around really, really amazing people that have guided me uh, in a good direction. Um, and I, I think we've been blessed. We've had three opportunities at three bills. Um, we've passed all three bills. Um, so we got a pretty good record on, on what we're doing. Um, we've had, and that's also been a team effort from a lot of people here in Florida. Uh, wanting the same things, wanting agricultural, you know, the ag, the hemp to grow, come back to this, to this state, be able to provide to the farmers, create a safety product to make sure that people know what, what they're taking because, they, you know, typically, and I'll leave with this, we, we don't care what we take. You and I could probably, you know, eat something, drink something. We don't care. Yeah. But when you're giving it to your kid or you're giving it to your mom or you're giving it to a loved one, you know, you, you, you care. You know, we're pretty reckless with our own bodies, but we're typically not too reckless with people that we truly love. So that that's really what we need to understand. So we need to make sure that people understand what we're trying to go through, understand that they need to follow Florida guidelines, understand that they need to sell good products, you know, whether it's cannabis or it's CBD. Doesn't really yeah. matter. You got to make sure that whatever you're giving to somebody else, that you know that you're providing them with something that's going to make them feel good, that's going to do them some good and that they're going to enjoy. I couldn't agree more, man. And, and I think it's awesome. Um, and to that note, a hundred percent, you know, when you're looking at, at the elderly or you're looking at your kids and you're looking for the people that aren't, you know, I don't want to say middle age, but between 20 and 50 and, and, you know, are in good health and, and all that we we've got to be careful with what we're giving them. Um, and then, you know, I, I don't know how educated you are on the topic. I'm assuming more than me, but CBD for pets. I know that you guys have on your website and I'm actually being selfish here and asking you a question. You know, I just took my dog to the vet last week and she's 10 years old. She's a lab mix, but completely healthy has the heart of a six year old and lungs. Everything else is great, but she's like most labs is getting arthritis. Right. And they prescribed her an anti-inflammatory. And I remember I looked at my wife and I said, well, why don't we try CBD? And she asked the doctor and the doctor almost laughed at us. Right. And I was sitting there and I'm like, you know, I don't claim to be a smart person, but I've read enough about what's going on. And I know that you can't technically claim that it fights inflammation, but I know that that's one of the properties of it. So, you hey, know, it, we don't have to give man, the FDA, FDA said it themselves. It's one of the best anti-inflammatories that the human body can have. So there's something behind why the FDA said that. Um, we can't say it, but the fact is, is that all I've always told everybody, don't listen to me because I'm, I'm obviously, I'm a co-founder of a company that sells this product. Take the product. So we've always done yeah. try and buy. Every mammal has an endocannabinoid system um, and it's a nutrition. In my mind, it's a wellness nutrition. We have deficiencies in our body. 
um, as we get older, everybody goes through some type of deficiencies. So if, if you're providing that nutrients to your body where you have a homeostasis, whether it's an anti-inflammatory, I mean, it's not going to help a broken bone, but if a lot of our issues as humans and, and as mammals is an inflammation, inflammation yeah. is, is the cause of a lot of diseases that we go through in our lives. So if you're able to at least help that type of inflammation, um, why am I going to get on a meds? Why, why am I going to listen to the 80 commercials that are on TV? And why don't I try something more natural? And if it doesn't work, then that's different. But I, I, my, my father, who's 95, was at my house for three days this week, um, stopped taking most of his meds. And uh, I got in a fight with his doctor because they were giving him gabapentin. They were giving him all kinds. Of, they gave him Zola, for God's sakes. He's 95 years old. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, come on. Yeah. So he, he literally medicates. Um, we give him small five milligram THCs and, uh, and that helps him sleep. It takes a lot of his pain away. He uses our, you know, our product for it and it's helped him. He's, you know, he's, I could have a conversation with him. He's not doped up or anything like that, which, um, we received a lot of letters from families that have thanked us for that because they're talking to family members and they're not just doped up sitting in a bed. So I've seen it again for us. That is our experience. Um, so if you could start with something natural, um, for anybody who you love, including your pets, which typically we love them more than our kids at times, you know, um, so, you know, why, why give them a drug that you're going to have to continue if the CBD work, it's not going to hurt them. Um, as yeah. long as you're not over, you know, you're not overdoing it because they, they really don't need a lot. Um, and you could do it like anything else. It's, it's, it's baby steps, you small dose, three, five days, see how they feel you'll be able to tell if they're getting up better, if they're not limping as much. And if that works, why am I going to give my dog a pill? You know, it's, it's, yeah. there's just really no reason for it. No. And I think that's something I'm definitely going to look into, not even look into. I'm going to try it for sure. Because that was, you know, the, like I said, the doctor kind of laughed at me and I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty confident I'm educated enough on this, on this topic that, that it's going to, that I should try it. Right. So definitely going to try that for sure. And then one, one thing I'm just curious in, in general that I'd love to learn more about is using CBD for people with, um, you know, things like autism, right? I, I don't know if, if how much you guys have looked into that or anything else, but, you know, I have a, a friend of mine who does amazing work and I'm going to shout him out here because he doesn't get enough credit for what he does. Uh, Matt, my good buddy, Matt Rosenberg has a, a, a nonprofit called United Spectrum Corp. And he is a personal trainer and he is a gym where he trains autistic children, right? And he had actually asked me a while ago, you know, can you look into CBD? Do you think it's something that I should bring into the gym? So, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot because I know you have a whole team of people, but if there's anything that, that we could do together or we can look into something along those lines, it would be absolutely amazing to do because I'd love to see, you know, how far and how much people can benefit from this product. What I can tell you right now is we've done this and we've done this multiple times. We've worked with Joe DiMaggio's Children's Hospital. We've sponsored over 32 families. Um, we've probably given away over $2 million worth of products in the last 24 months, whether it's veterans, canines, um, or just research. Um, I'd be more than happy as a company to be able to provide. I mean, we're part of the you know, RA Foundation, um, Arthritis Foundation. I have, we have one of our guys, uh, Steve-O that actually sits on that board because we've provided products for people that it's helped. Um, so um, we have no issues uh, in providing free products and they'll be, I'd be more than happy to provide that to them so they could kind of see for themselves. Um, we always recommend them speaking to their doctor, letting them know that they're going to be doing that. But when it comes down to providing for something like that, um, we've never charged a child under 18 years old. So that's never been something that, you know, that's one of the things and one of the foundations we've been as, as a company is if a family member um, comes to us and they have a child that has an issue, we don't charge them. We haven't done it ever and we won't ever do it uh, because I think that's a responsibility that we have to be able to provide products back to those who truly need it and especially with families that have children. So that's always been one of our things, um, whether it's our veterans too, our police officers, our canines, all those type of things um, we, we've always given back um, and in a big way, that's the, that's the at least we feel that we could do. That, that's absolutely amazing, man. And I think part, 
you know, part of the best part about being successful is throwing the ladder back down to help people. And man, that, that seems like it's just important to you as it is, is growing the company. It's, it's absolutely incredible. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to try, let's turn this up to a little bit of a lighter note. There's one last product on your website that I want to ask you about because I'm infatuated with it and it's something I'm definitely going to pick up. I just need a little bit of advice. CBD coffee. Am I going with the founders blend? Did you guys put that together personally? Cause I'm a coffee guy. I love good coffee. <laughs> so even though it's got gonna, CBD I'm in it, take it's got to taste sets good. Of them Cause we just launched our new coffee. It's coming out tomorrow. There's three flavors. Um, we actually have a bud coffee. So we actually have bud actual flower bud within mixed in with the coffee. So we okay. have uh, one that's, that's actually seeped in. And then now we also have a bud, a hemp bud coffee. So we'll, we'll talk off the air and I'll make sure to put a little package together. And then you tell me which one's your favorite one. So I won't even have, I won't even recommend it because I'm a coffee guy myself. So, you know, that's automatic to me. So what I'll do is I'll put a nice little package together and I'll make sure to get it over to you. And then you tell me which one you like the best. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, really excited about that because i love coffee and you know i look at it like hey i have a hard time remembering to take a tincture or anything else but i drink a cup of coffee every morning so i can tell uh, you it, it really feels good because it. it doesn't give you that edgy high it kind of just takes you up there right there so you get that nice coffee caffeine shot but you don't get the jitters that's awesome man well arby let me tell you man you've got an open invitation to be on this show whenever you want you want to talk about something, you want to rant about something, you want to talk about new products, man, reach out to us. You've got a home here until you're ready to relaunch those shows. Your home is right here on Elevate Your Grind, man. And, and again, I can't thank you enough for being on. I can't thank you enough for the work that you've done in Florida. And I'm really excited for when things start to open back up to, to get to hang out with you. Man, much appreciated. When I definitely open up, we'll, we'll, we'll switch. I'll come to visit you. You come and visit me at the studio. And, uh, and we'll have a great time. I really appreciate you having me on, truly. Absolutely, man. Well, I really appreciate you, you jumping into this experiment. Everybody on Instagram, thank you very much. I only got to go over a little bit here for me for Facebook. Thank you guys again. This has been a live edition of Elevate Your Grind. I'm your host, Todd Rosales. Uh, we're going to do another live edition on Thursday at 5 o'clock with Jake Bullock, the CEO of Can. Uh, one of the first cannabis drinks is out on the West Coast. And then tune in uh, next week on the 11th. We're actually going to be doing at 6 p.m. a panel on investing in cannabis. Uh, RB, I usually cut it off after that, but I forgot to ask you. Let's, uh, let's, let's get a little promotion. Where can people find you? Where can they find Green Roads? Let, let's let them know. I appreciate that. You can find us, obviously, on Instagram at Green Roads World. I'm mean, actually at Green Roads. We actually used to have the world there, but we actually had to buy it. So we have at Green Roads uh on instagram at green roads on twitter if you want to find me it's rbarby underscore barroso feel free i always answer all my ims um anything that you need for me i'm i'm very accessible at any point in time and, and again thanks for for having us and we'll definitely be uh, speaking soon absolutely man well for those of us following on facebook we're signing off and a little bit more awkward for instagram i'm gonna reach across here and <laughs> sign off I'll see you later, brother. Uh, Be good. All right, man. Appreciate it. Peace.